Joining us now, Comrade Isare Mu, who is uh, a NEC member of the NLC and Secretary General Alumni Association of National Institute, Kuru Joss. You're also Vice President, Global Industrial Union, who just elected last week in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. We have to say congratulations to you on that. Thank you so uh, much. All of this many caps that you're wearing now, <laughs> you definitely will be propagating the, the labor movement even much further. Mm. But looking critically at what has been happening this week, I mean, mm. the NESG has been holding in Abuja this week, and there's been plenty of talk. In fact, it was themed made in Nigeria. What is the labor movement's perspective on this particular uh, topic, this theme? Well, I think it's quite uh, remarkable that uh, the 22nd edition of the Economic Summit seems to have uh, listened to the clearing call of the labor movement. You know, you know, we're being the forefront of this, that the only way Nigeria can move forward is that we must learn to produce what we consume, but above all, we must try to patronize what we also produce. So I think the team is very, very timely, you know, and it's highly commendable on the part of the organizers of Economic Summit. I mean, I'm also a participant. I was there, you know, uh, I was at the, uh, at the summit. And uh, quite remarkable that the president also came. I mean, I just listened to the tape he played now, and he has made the point we must feed ourselves, we must clothe ourselves. Uh, with specific reference to textile, I mean, you've also introduced me. I'm also the general secretary of Textile Workers in, of Nigeria. Uh, in Nigeria, with population of 176 million people, uh, we, we consume close to about 1.2 billion meters of cloth. If you take the average six meters per person, uh, of course you need to you need to make excess for Babariga Agbada <laughs> on Friday or Sunday. I mean that's a lot of. Uh, I mean, level of consumption of cloth, good for business. I mean, mm -hmm. with that alone, you can guarantee close about 20, you know, textile garment industries to be, to be in existence. But it's sad that as I'm talking to you now, uh, this 1.2 billion meters of cloth, the domestic market share of this is very negligible because we're importing most of the things that we wear. So how concrete would you say so, the conversation that was had there mm, uh, is in such a way that you think it would impact what first, is going, the what's awareness, going forward? The awareness is very, very remarkable. Mm. We must learn to patronize what we produce. I mean, I recollect the late uh, fellow Nikolapo. He had a track in the 70s by Africa. And he said the only way we can get out of poverty is to produce and buy our You can't say yours is inferior. You know, I mean, even Azumi is inferior. It's constant patronage that will lead to perfection. Look at the Chinese product when the first of us started. I mean, people said they were inferior, but now they are improving because you keep on patronizing them. I just came from Brazil, and it's a highly industrialized country, close to almost uh, the, 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 the manufacturing share of their uh, <laughs> GDP. It's close to almost about 40%. You see the buses on the road, they're all made in Brazil. They are patronizing, they are producing, they are patronizing. So what I'm saying is that we need a strong patronage policy in this country. And we can start with small, small things. I mean, it would be very remarkable if the Federal Executive Council meeting every Wednesday they meet, you know, I mean, to symbolically issues that to wear Nigeria is good for business. I mean, it's, it's not just patriotism, it's good, smart business. I mean, I'm talking of Texas because it's labor intensive. You, if you're talking of massive unemployment, you can do so. It's the same thing with automobile. I mean, I could recall we, we hosted the All-African Games in yeah, 2006, I can't recall it now. I mean, we went all the way to go and buy BMW from South Africa. But you are Pujo <laughs> in Kaduna, I mean, that you can't buy and then patronize them. Uh, so I think we need those, those guests. So then above all, procurement law has to be amended. I was happy yesterday when the senior president came, you know, and highly commendable because they brought some activism to the legislative you know, chambers now looking at development uh, bills and procurement bill is going to be amended in a way that you must channel public funding to patronize media in Nigeria. Government is a big spender. We are going to spend 6.6 .6 trillion naira this year. I mean, plus minus the, with the crisis that we have, that's huge money. What part of it are we spending to patronize media in Nigeria? And the manufacturer association you just made recently, you know, they said one of the biggest problems they have uh, now, it's also weak demand. I mean, they don't have enough patronage. 
First, we must induce domestic demand by paying people salaries and wages so that you can buy made in uh, Nigerian goods. Now, but we must also make it mandatory because the biggest spenders are the MDAs, you know, the ministries. I mean, they are going to procure us tough things. You know, we have IDPs now. We have tarpaulin to equip them. Are we buying tarpaulin produced in the country? And we have factories producing them. We'd rather go to China to bring them. <laughs> you, uh, legislators who have complained they, are, they shouldn't buy cars, but they kept on buying. But even if they buy, let them use, buy locally produced cars if there are any. So I think I was highly impressed with the level of recommendations that have come out now at the level of uh, the economic summit. But the government is the one that must drive this, you know, and of course all the relevant uh, agencies uh, of, of government must be bought into this. And we must disabuse the notion that made in Nigeria is inferior. It's completely wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I put on here is made in Nigeria. It's highly competitive. It passed through quality control by the standard organization. Many of, the, many of our factories have won a lot of awards in terms of quality. But the bottom line is that the pricing, I think that's a critical thing because imported, uh, you know, useless products that have been dumped to this country, the attraction to Nigerian consumers is because the price is cheap. And it's cheaper because they are produced under more favorable economic conditions. You know, I mean, you are talking of made in China where there's uninterrupted power supply, mm. cheap uh, gas, you know, so they dump on here. But what I'm even saying here is that in terms of quality, our products, they are very competitive and are the key for us to revive the industry, patronage is key to it. We'll come back and talk about yeah. quality, but let's quickly go to Lagos for some questions. Yeah, that's right. Mr. Aramu, uh, you know, when we talk about Made in Nigeria, this is not the first time you've always highlighted this any time you've uh, been on our program. Uh, I recall we were talking about the textile industry recently, and you also reminded us of uh, how difficult it has been for some, even those around the Ikorodu axis of Lagos State, uh, staying in business. How much of buying uh, of Nigeria uh, have we as a people been able to do? Because it would seem as if we have people who are ingenious, uh, they are creative, but the patronage seems to be the problem from the government as well as the people. Yeah, well, thanks you. thank you, Suleiman. I mean, you, you've, you've said it all, that the patronage is very weak, it's very low. Uh, and it's, it's low partly because our market has also been highly dominated by inferior, you know, imported goods. If I'm not even imported officially, most, most of them smuggle goods that have come in. Uh, but let me also tell you this. On the average, Nigeria spent close to about $100 billion, you know, uh, on us of goods that are imported to the country. Now, this is good for business. The point I'm raising here is that what percentage of this is, 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 is spent on Nigerian made goods? Uh, and it's extremely very negligible. That's why most factories also close down. One of the critical failure factors that has affected the, the, the industry is not just lack of electricity, smuggling, but also lack of patronage. And that's the point I'm raising that the biggest spender in this economy today, whether you like it or not, is still the government. Uh, at the state level, we have state budgets in billions of naira. At the federal level, we are talking of trillions. I think we should make it a matter of policy that greater percentage of this public spending goes to patronize made in Nigerian goods. Uh, of course, discussing make, make made in Nigeria also maybe also reopen the question of how many of our goods are we actually producing. You know, but what I'm saying the limited ones that we are producing, we need patronage for them. But the challenge is also to make sure we even make more in Nigeria. And that's why the whole debate about ease of business you know, we need to discuss it. It also came up at the economic summit that we need to create appropriate environment in a way that we produce most of the <coughs> things that we, we rather import to this country. Uh, and that's why we support the CVM policy of this restriction on the allocation of foreign exchange, you know, to about 41 items. Because those are things, good, goods that we have comparative advantage to produce them at home. Uh, and I think when we now produce them, it's important that we patronize them. I mean, I can talk more of textile, where, where I belong to. Uh, and I know very well that most of our products are competitive. I mean, when textile was textile in the 70s, we produced virtually all, all, all manner of uh, textile products, including uh, fishing nets, you know, because which are used, you know, for fishing in, uh, in coastal areas. I mean, but today, if I ask you, where are the fishing nets, even mosquito nets, we all import them. I mean, when you see some uh, donor agencies donating mosquito nets and the rest of them. Most of them are just used, being used as conduit pie 
to push us of dumb boots on the, on the country. So I think it's important that as a matter of police, and I think procurement law is very significant, and we have been assured now by the Senate that by the end of this year, they will, get it, they will be able to finalize you know, uh, perfection of that law, and then the President must assent to it to not make it mandatory. And that's the way it's been done in many countries. Uh, you know the old debate in American politics today is about the need to revive American economy, and the case is to patronize <laughs> what they produce. In fact, the whole uh, crudity of, uh, of, of uh, Trump is based on the fact that we build wall against not just individuals coming, but even goods coming from China. You know, because I mean, and that's a developed country. Now, we that we are down, it's a scandal that it's bad enough we don't produce enough, but the limited ones we produce, we don't patronize them. And it's not just goods, even services. Consultancy, we take them abroad to go and get engineers. I don't want to mention some of the big names we keep on patronizing, but we have local services that can be patronized. And the only way to create jobs, you know, and uh, turn the economy around.